Let's talk about gaining some control over our assemblies and our surfaces here. So uh, you, you've seen that we've got the basic configuration working where we're building our honeybee model and we're exporting that out to the PHPP. But we want to be able to explicitly control things like the name of the surface, the surface exposure, ground, outdoor, air, etc as well as the construction type. Obviously, that's going to be a absolutely a critical piece of any Passive House workflow. And so dialing in and being able to control the actual constructions which are being applied um, is uh, uh, absolutely crucial. So there's a lot to say about assemblies and materials. So we'll take our time and go through. Um, it's probably be quite a few videos, but um, we'll sort of work through it one, one piece at a time. Um, so I'm back in my Rhino scene here. You can see I've done a little bit of cleanup in my uh, Grasshopper scene. Um, uh, just housekeeping stuff. Again, uh, it's important to sort of keep those definitions tidy. Otherwise, they can get really unwieldy very quickly. So um, just added some dividers there and a, a little extra uh, labeling. So um, OK, let's talk about how we want to uh, uh, gain some control over these uh, individual faces. So the very first thing that we would like to do, so I'm going to come in here to um, to my scene and let me minimize grasshopper for a second turn off my section we don't really need that for the time being so the very first thing that i would like to do is actually take these sort of um, joined uh, these you know solid masses or poly surfaces here and explode them into individual faces so i would like to be able to let me go into my shaded view so that we can um, see things a little more easily. So I would like to gain control over these individual surfaces. And I would like to be able to say to the PHPP, this is a roof, and its name is blah, 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 and its uh, construction type is is X. And so there's lots of different ways we can do that. But I, I like to have individual face level control in the models that we're building. So what I'm going to do as a first step here is explode both of these thermal zones. So all we need to do to do that is come in here, select the thermal zone, and just hit or type in explode. So notice I'm typing in up here in the command line, type in explode, and say explode. And now what we have, instead of a single uh, poly surface, is I have individual surfaces. So rather than a single poly surface, I have one big surface. Notice that I still, or excuse me, I have many individual surfaces. Notice that I, um, I still have my floor assembly here, my floor surface, um, and uh, that's going to be key uh, uh, later on. So here's my second floor. I'm going to um, hide that and uh, bring up my first floor. So here's my first floor, and I'm going to do the same thing on my first floor. I'm going to type in explode in the command line up here to explode this single poly surface into a whole bunch of individual surfaces. So now I'm able to actually control, or I will be able to, I think, more easily control these things uh, within my Grasshopper definition. Now, of course, there's lots of ways you can do this. If you want to use native Grasshopper tools, if you want to use Honeybee construction sets, that kind of thing, that's awesome. That'll all work. That's totally fine. Um, I find with our modeling, I like to control those types of parameters here in the Rhino side. Um, but uh, you know, lots of ways you can work with these tools. And certainly, um, the Ladybug to PHPP tools are flexible. Uh, they would allow you to work however however you prefer. In any event, I'm going to explode these things into individual surfaces. So I've got a bunch of surfaces now in my model. Now, what do I do with those? Well. For instance, I could, let me go back into my grasshopper scene, notice now this is not going to work because now this doesn't have any reference any longer, so nothing, this is all not going to work for the time being uh, till we re-reference -re things, right? This was reference to that single poly surface, but we got, we deleted that poly surface when we exploded it, so these don't know what they're pointing to anymore. Um, so let's first of all reset our, our, our links just to keep things uh, working. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to go over to my layers. And on my layers, I'm going to right click on select, or right click on second floor, come down here and say select the objects. And that's going to select everything on that layer. I could also have hidden all the other layers and then just selected with my mouse. That would have been fine. In any event, come up here to BREP, uh, second floor, right click, and say set multiple BREPs. 
And now notice everything seems to be working again. And if we look at the input there in a the panel, now we have six individual surfaces. And so Honeybee is going to create six individual faces. Well, it, so far it looks just like it did before. We haven't really, we haven't really made any progress here. We, we, we had six faces before and we have six faces now. Um, the difference is that we're going to be able to gain some control over these things as they're, as they're going in. So let me do the same thing on the first floor, come over to here to first floor, come down to select objects, select all the objects, I'm going to come over here to the BREP first floor, right click and say set multiple. And so everything is working now. All right, so as I said, we could let me move this back into position here. We could certainly use all of our native honeybee tools. So we could use, uh, you know, the basic construction tools here. So in honeybee energy, um, you know, we can build materials and constructions, uh, uh, set them to um, construction sets, all of that. That's all, that's all fine. That all works great. Those are fantastic tools. If you like to work that way, that's great. So you could certainly apply those using those standard honeybee uh, processes. As I said, though, um, my preference is rather than have a whole bunch of stuff in the grasshopper side, I actually like to do a lot of parameter assessment back in the rhino side. So let's look at how we're going to do that. So let me minimize my grasshopper again. So rather, again, this is just an alternative to those basic honeybee tool, uh, uh, workflows, those, honey, those basic honeybee material and construction tools still work fine. So this is just a, a different alternative. So first of all, in the Rhino side tool, or in the Rhino side, if you've installed everything correctly, you should see a PH Tools toolbar as one of the options in Rhino. So we're no longer in Grasshopper, we're back in the Rhino side. And in the PH Tools toolbar, you'll see there's a whole bunch of, oops, of uh, different, different elements here. And these tools are designed to allow us to assign parameters inside of Rhino. So completely independent of Grasshopper, we can assign parameters to individual pieces of geometry. That geometry will hang on to those parameters, and then we can pull those parameters back out later on in Grasshopper. I like that as a workflow. I find that to work better for the types of projects we're working on. But again, you know, lots of ways to skin the cat. You can sort of do that however you prefer. But again, I'll sort of show you the way that this, that this process works. So as far as the surfaces are concerned, if we want to assign some parameters, some information to the surfaces, it's relatively straightforward. For instance, if I wanted to come in and select this surface, this upper surface, let me change this to shaded so it'll be a little more obvious. Oh, I guess that doesn't really help, does it? Anyway. If I want to set this upper element and I want this to be the ceiling and I want to be really explicit that this is the ceiling, how can I do that? Well, I can come over here and I can come into my pH tools toolbar and I can come to this guy here that's, uh, no, that's labeled as set surface parameters. And if I click on this set surface parameters, I get this little dialog box that pops up asking me for some information. So I'm able to give it a name. I can set the surface type, the energy plus boundary condition, and the assembly type. So we'll hold off on assembly type. We won't get there yet, but let's just say, let's give it a name. So let's call it my ceiling surface. And we'll give it a type. Let's say that the type is going to be a ceiling. Right? It's a ceiling or a roof. We could um, set it to roof if we wanted, but a ceiling will also work. Um, Think. Yeah, so let's set it to ceiling, and then as long as the energy plus boundary condition is set to outdoors, so it's exposed to the outdoors, and then assembly, we'll come back and talk about assemblies, we can assign those afterwards. Um, but if I now say OK, what has happened? Well, I've applied some information to this surface. How do I know that? Well, if I select the surface, and I come over here to my properties, and in the properties, I come all the way over to the right where it says attribute user text. Notice I now have some interesting uh, attributes associated with this surface. So this tool, this set surface parameters tool, is going to set up in a standardized fashion some properties or some, some attributes for a surface. 
If I was to click on some other surface that I have not assigned any attributes to, notice that its attribute user text is blank. So again, click on that the ceiling surface. So I've got some interesting stuff here. It knows that it's a surface type of ceiling. It knows that it has a name. And it, its energy plus boundary condition is set to outdoors. And of course, we can also host construction information. We'll come back and talk about that uh, uh, in a few minutes. Well, OK, so that's interesting. So what about the walls? Well, let me let me go ahead and drag a selection box or a crossing box across the walls. So I'm, I just selected the walls, not the ceiling and not the floor. So just those four wall surfaces. I could also I could also go through and say, you know, hold down the shift key and select one after another after another. That would also work. And I'll come back up here to my set parameter surface parameters again, and I'll call this um, second floor wall. I'll set the surface type to wall. I'll set the energy plus boundary condition to outdoors, and then I'll leave the assembly blank and I'll say OK. And notice now that whoops that each of these wall surfaces now has an attribute user text of wall surface type, uh, an object name, and then an energy plus boundary condition. All right, well, so let's finish up our second floor here. Let me turn off the first floor because I want to grab the floor assembly of this second floor. And so I just turned off the first floor so that I could easily I could easily get to this polygon. So this one, let's come up to our set surface params again, and we'll call this one second second floor floor. It's confusing, but OK. Um, and we will call it a floor. But this time, this surface is not exposed to the outdoors. This is an interior surface. And so I'm going to tag it as adiabatic, adiabatic meaning no heat flow. So that's going to be an adiabatic interior surface. So for all of our interior surfaces, we want to tag those as adiabatic. So it is a floor, but it's an adiabatic exposure. And so it'll get ignored later on when it comes, comes time to export to the PHPP. And again, if I was to come into my properties over here and go to my attribute user text, notice that those properties have been assigned to that per, that surface. And so that surface can get modified and copied and pasted. It's just all of the it's just a normal geometry in Rhino and all of this information will travel with it wherever you take that surface. Of course if you do something like delete it, all the parameters also go away. So you have to you would have to reassign them uh, if you did if you did something like that. So this guy is going to be useful in that respect. So that set surface parameters is going to be useful to create and, and assign all of this information. So let's come back to Grasshopper now. And now the question, of course, is what are we going to do? What, what do we do with all that information? So all that information lives over in the Rhino scene. How does that information flow through into our Grasshopper scene? So uh, this is my grasshopper scene. I'm creating my honeybee rooms or zones. I'm configuring the model, and then I'm exporting to the PHPP. So hopefully yours looks something similar. So I'm going to zoom in over here on the create honeybee uh, rooms component. And we've got our second floor geometry here. So we've got our individual surfaces being referenced in. So these individual reference B-reps are coming in, and then they're flowing through into our honeybee geometry. And what I would like to have happen is for all of that information that I just encoded into the Rhino side to somehow show up here in the Grasshopper side. So I set a bunch of names and I set a bunch of parameters. How does that, how does that get transferred into, into Grasshopper? Well, the way we're going to do that is with one of our Passive House Tools components. And so I'm going to use, uh, for the first time, I'm going to come into this O1 model section. And in the O1 model section, I'm going to use this guy here called ladybug to, pass, ladybug to PHPP get surface parameters. So the get surface parameters, just as the, the help indicates here, is going to get used before a honeybee face component. And it's going to pull all of this useful information, like names and exposures and constructions eventually, into Grasshopper. 
So let's see how that works. I'm going to I'm going to select this guy. So again, I'm in Pacifiers Tools. I'm going to come into the O1 model section, and in the uh, um, first part of the O1 model section, there's a, a component here labeled Get Surface Parameters. So I'm just going to click that, and I'm going to drop that onto the canvas. So this is a new component on our canvas. And as that, if we if we hover over it, notice that it says that this component gets used before a honeybee face component. All right, so this gets used before this face component. So let me make a little room here and put this guy in line. And let's take a look at this component. So the get surface parameters component takes in some surfaces, either mesh or rhino bee rep geometry. It's got something called auto orientation. We'll come back to that. And then it outputs something called geo geometry, names, types, boundary conditions, energy plus constructions, and radiance modifiers. And if you notice, the outputs from the get surface params align perfectly to the inputs for a honeybee face component. So the way that this component is going to work is it's going to take in some surface geometry, it's going to do a bunch of work, and then it's going to output the items that a honeybee face needs in order to correctly get built. So let's see how, what that looks like. So I'm going to take my BREP second floor geometry. So remember, this is just six individual reference BREPs. I'm going to take that and I'm going to feed that into the surfaces input on this new get surface params component from Ladybug to PHPP. And it went off and did some work, but it doesn't really look like it did anything. But let's take a look at what the outputs are for from this geometry, or from this component. So first of all, we have a series of untrimmed surfaces. All right, so we took in some geometry. We kick out some geometry. What about this one? Oh, that's interesting. So one thing that this component did was went back into Rhino. It grabbed the name of each surface and then brought that in and organized it in the same order as the geometry. So that's pretty interesting. We also have this type input, this type uh, designator, which is coming in as wall, floor, and roof ceiling. So back here, in our when we used our set surface params to set this wall, floor, ceiling, that's flowing through as the type. Uh, and we also have the boundary condition here. Notice we're mostly outdoors, except for one adiabatic. Number four is adiabatic. Let's check the name. Number four, that's my second floor floor. That was my adiabatic surface there. And then what about the last one here, energy plus construction? Those are all nulls, radiance. Those are all nulls. So we didn't assign anything for constructions or anything else. So we just left those as nulls. So that doesn't matter right now. Eventually, we can add, add information there if we want. So what this, again, what this component has done is it's sort of gone back into Rhino. It's gotten a whole bunch of information about each of these surfaces. So each of these individual surfaces, which have parameters assigned to them, and it's brought it into Grasshopper. And now all we need to do is just connect up the outputs from this component to the inputs of the honeybee face. So I'm just going to connect geometry to geometry, name to name, type to type, boundary condition to boundary condition, energy plus construction to energy plus construction. All right, and what did that do for us? Well, let's come over here and let's turn, let's go back and um, uh, uh, take a look at what our uh, PHPP looks like at this point. So let me turn on Excel. So let me just uh, spool up Excel here. And as soon as that is booted up, so there's our Excel document. And as soon as that is booted up, uh, let me come in here and I'll turn, I'll set use difference to false just to, just to make sure that we're forcing it to write everything. And I'll just connect Excel to Excel. And it wrote 180 values. Let's go over and look at Excel and see what we got, though. Let me go to my let me go to my areas worksheet and come down to my areas worksheet and notice what we have now. Whoops, let me zoom in a little bit and scroll over. Second floor wall, sec 
So go for a wall, my surface ceiling. Where did this come from? Well, this was all the information that we encoded in the Rhino side tool. Notice why are these still here? Well, we've only set up half of the model, right? We, we have not set up any of our first floor assemblies yet. We've only set up our second floor uh, uh, faces. So right now we're only explicitly labeling our second floor spaces. We'll come back and we can do that uh, all in the next piece. Uh, and of course, things like exposures, um, and surface types, that's all being assigned explicitly inside of our Rhino scene. So our P, we're starting to gain a little bit of control over our PHPP here. Obviously, I can change and assign those uh, surfaces um, and reassign those at any point. So for instance, my surface, my ceiling surface, if I was to come in here and let's go back and let's relabel that, let's call this a different name say OK, and let's go ahead and push that through. And as soon as this is finished updating, we should see that this will pop out into our Excel sheet. And there we go, a different name. So I can control everything that I see in the PHPP from within Rhino and Grasshopper. So we have lots of other tools that help you control all of the various aspects, but that's the basic idea is we've got a whole set of tools that allow us to set up and encode parameters into the Rhino and Grasshopper, and then those all flow through into the PHPP. So hopefully that all makes sense. Um, I will leave it to you to set up the first floor assembly. So you're going to set up the first floor assemblies in exactly the same way. Just go through and select one surface at a time. Use the set surface parameters tool in the Passive House Tools ribbon in the Rhino side tool to set up the parameters and then push them through into the PHPP. And when we come back in the next video, I think we'll turn our attention to construction assembly. So now that we uh, have a little bit of control over the different faces, we want to turn our attention to building up the assemblies for these individual surfaces. So we will look at that in the next section. As I said, why don't you go ahead and finish off the, um, the first floor, go ahead and name all your surfaces and uh, configure everything so that it's pushing through correctly. And as I said, in the next video, we'll turn our attention to our construction assemblies.